video, we're going to be preparing a pasta recipe that has a whole lot of nutrition. We're also going to be showing you how to make a very easy pesto. This recipe is awesome because it has most of your food groups in it. It has whole grains in it in the form of whole grain pasta. It has protein in the form of chicken. It has dairy in the form of fresh mozzarella cheese and it has vegetables in the form of tomatoes. You can also customize it in any way that you'd like to, but most of the flavor is gonna be coming from the pesto that we make. The first step is going to be to get a baking sheet with an oven-proof rack that fits into it. This is going to be perfect because it's going to lift the chicken off of the pan, which is gonna mean the chicken is not going to be sitting in its own juices, and so it's not going to be soggy. Then you're going to place the chicken ugly side up on that rack. I know it sounds strange to have the ugly side up, but we're gonna be flipping it in a minute. So that's the reason that you start this way. Then you're going to season it really well with lemon pepper or Greek seasoning. Put a lot more seasoning on there than you think that you need because the chicken is big and you wanna make sure that it soaks all the way in there. Then you're going to flip your chicken over. I'm using a fork just so that I'm not getting my hands dirty so that I have to wash them. You're going to season your other side really well and then place in the oven at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes until it reaches 165 degrees. If you want to save some time, split your chicken breast horizontally or you can buy chicken tenders because those are going to be thinner and that way it'll cook a little bit faster. So now we're going to move on to the pesto. Store bought will work and it tastes just fine. The first thing you want to think about is whether or not you have any nut allergies in your house. So the Classico brand does not have any nuts in it, so that's a great option. The Great Value brand does have cashews and pine nuts in it, so if you have people in your house that are allergic to tree nuts, keep that in mind if you're purchasing your pesto. That's something to consider. Pesto traditionally has pine nuts in it, and so that can be a consideration if you're purchasing it. But, to be absolutely safe, you can make your own. You want to start with a large pile of basil and separate the leaves from the stems. Any of the thicker stems, you want to take those out as well because those can contribute to the texture of the final product. You also want to pick out any of the brown pieces or anything that obviously has been chewed on by bugs during this process. Placing these directly in the food processor is going to save you some time in the next step and then having the little bowl off to the side to put your stems into will save you some time as well. This is a great way to use up extra basil at the end of the season and this can be frozen at the end of the season as well. Then you're going to gather about two tablespoons of fresh minced garlic, a half a cup of fresh grated parmesan and some olive oil. Put the lid on your food processor and you want to make sure that that's locked in place. Every food processor is different and you'll get used to yours as you go along. Then you're going to lift out the feed tube and that allows you to pour things in as you are running your food processor. But you're going to start out by drizzling in a little bit of olive oil. Start with a quarter cup, but you might need to add more throughout the process. And then there is a tube in each of the food processors that allows you to add things in while the food processor is running. And we're gonna keep on drizzling a little bit more olive oil in there, just until we get it into a consistency that's about like yogurt. Then we're going to take that plunger out again, add your Parmesan cheese in, your garlic, and your pine nuts if nobody in your house has a tree nut allergy. Put that plunger back in and run your food processor. Then you're seasoning with salt and you're going to adjust your consistency with a bit more olive oil if needed. The pine nuts might have thickened it up a little bit. This is going to be the sauce for the pasta so you want it to be a consistency that's going to work well and going to distribute throughout your pasta. Scrape down your sides because some of your stuff will have run out the sides and you want to make sure that it's an even consistency throughout. 
Then you're going to carefully remove your food processor blade. Food processor blades are super sharp, so you need to be careful with this. And you're going to scrape all of your pesto off the food processor blade, set that to the side. Um, be careful with washing that as well because it's very easy to get cut. And then scrape the remainder of your pesto into a bowl or into a container ready to make your pasta. Once your pesto is made, you're gonna gather your other ingredients. We are making a double batch, and so we're gonna use two boxes of penne pasta and using whole wheat. Also, some fresh mozzarella pearls, um, two eight ounce containers, and your pesto. You're also gonna need a knife, a cutting board, and some cherry tomatoes, and two of the to-go container lids. We're gonna be using those to cut your cherry tomatoes, so those are a great option if you have those to save some time. So to cut your cherry tomatoes in half, you're going to lay some of your cherry tomatoes, make sure you've washed them first, on your lid. And that's the side with the lip on it. And then lay the other one with the lip over top of it, and then you're going to take your knife and slide it between the two lids to cut your tomatoes. I found that keeping it towards the front edge of your cutting board makes it a little bit easier. And then you're going to put your tomatoes into your bowl. And that's like a little life hack to help you cut your tomatoes without having to cut them individually. Just be very careful to keep the heel of your hand out of the way of the knife. Usually you want to use about a 10 ounce container of tomatoes for a pound of pasta. About 15 minutes into your chicken cooking, you want to put your pasta water on and once that water is boiling, add your pasta into your boiling water. You also want to add a little bit of salt to your water. Whole wheat pasta takes a little bit longer than traditional pasta to cook just because it has to get through that outer hull of the whole grains and so it takes between 11 and 12 minutes to cook. And you're going to cook it to whatever doneness that your family likes. You're going to check your chicken at your 25 minute mark or a little earlier if you've cut it into the thinner pieces or you're using chicken tenders. And then after you check it at that 25 minute mark, you wanna check it every three to five minutes after that until it reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit with your thermometer. Once your chicken gets to the proper temperature, you're gonna remove it from your pan and place it on your cutting board. So cut your chicken into bite-sized chunks for whatever size works for your family. I'm using a meat fork to help me cut it just because the chicken's really warm. And a bench scraper to lift it up because lifting with a knife puts you at risk of injury. Then you're going to bring your cooked pasta over that's drained. You're going to stir your pesto and a little bit of olive oil into your pasta and get that completely coated. And then add your chicken, mozzarella, and tomatoes into the pasta. Most of the time I stir this up in the pot that it was in, but I made a larger batch and so I'm stirring it in a big bowl. And then once it's evenly stirred, you're going to serve and enjoy. You can serve with freshly grated Parmesan. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this is something that you can try to cook for your family. Thank you for joining us on Mixing with Marks. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.